Woody Woodpecker, a porn star, and President Eisenhower are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is March 17th. It is the 11th Tuesday on the 12th week of 2020. It is also the 87th day of winter. That means we only got three days left until spring. It is also St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is the celebration of Irish pride and heritage. St. Patrick was a British-born priest and former slave who is known for converting the Irish to Christianity. He died on March 17 in the year 4. 61 and was mostly forgotten. As time passed, stories grew around St. Patrick, and centuries later, he was honored with the title Patron Saint of Ireland. That's the Wikipedia version of St. Patrick's Day. Most of us know it as a day to drink green beer. Did you ever notice so many Irish people are born around Christmas? They're like Christmas babies? That has nothing to do with the religion and the Christianity thing. St. Patrick's Day is about nine months before Christmas, so there's a lot of drinking, fighting, and sloppy makeup sex on the Blarney Stone, I guess. Today, we have a quick video. Not a lot went on other than St. Patrick's Day. It was a struggle to find anyone that we might all know for the died on portion of this video. It, there's not a lot of interesting people died. It's weird. All right, let's see what March 17th has shown us in the past. 1941 in Washington, D.C., the National Gallery of Art is officially opened by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I went there once when I was probably 11. It was pretty cool. I've never been much of an art guy, but I love the backstory that the tour guide gave us, so it was it was a good day. 1960. President Dwight D. Eisenhower signs the National Security Council directive on the anti-Cuban covert action program that will ultimately lead to the Bay of Pigs invasion. Possibly the biggest fiasco the CIA has ever had the misfortune of having their name associated with. The Bay of Pigs invasion was a failed landing operation on the southwestern coast of Cuba in 1961 by a bunch of Cuban exiles who wanted rid of Fidel Castro. Oddly enough, the U.S. wanted rid of him too. So we kind of worked together. The invasion was secretly financed and directed by the U.S. government. CIA, basically. This all went down at the height of the Cold War. The failed invasion led to major changes in international relations between Cuba, the United States, and the Soviet Union. They pretty much unfriended us. That was it. 1968, as a result of nerve gas testing by the U.S. Army Chemical Corps in Skull Valley, Utah, over 6,000 sheep are found dead. Needless to say, there were a lot of angry farmers. The U.S. Army Chemical Corps, these are the dudes that gave us Agent Orange, so, you know, they've always been doing great work. 1985, serial killer Richard Ramirez, known as the Night Stalker, commits his first two murders in his Los Angeles murder spree. He'd already killed a few people the year before, but this day, Day he started the spree in Los Angeles that killed two people on that day and he tried to kill a third. He terrorized Los Angeles for the first half of 1985. And on August 31st, he had just returned to LA after going to meet up with his brother in Arizona. While he was on the trip on the Greyhound, he didn't realize the police had ID'd him and his picture was put in heavy rotation on the local news. So he gets back to Los Angeles, he gets off the bus on the 31st, and he was recognized by a group of ladies. They started screaming, and like in a movie, he looked down at a stack of newspapers and saw a an old mug shot of him on the cover of the newspaper. So he runs across the freeway and tries to carjack a woman in the worst possible neighborhood in Los Angeles, dead center of East LA. Some of the neighbor people saw him trying to steal this woman's car and they chased him down and they beat him until the police got there. If the police would have been a little bit slower, he probably never would have made it to the trial. I guess one of the locals <laughs> was uh, kind of beating him with a lead pipe on the head. He had to get several stitches and he was, he was a mess when the police finally got there. Anyway, this idiot died at 53 years old Thank <laughs> you. He had been on death row for more than 23 years. In total, he killed 14 people and did a whole bunch of other horrible things along. Born on March 17th, 1919, Nat King Cole, American singer, pianist, television host. My grandmother used to listen to him all the time when I was a kid. If I hear him in the background at a mall or a store or something like that, I just, it just brings me back to my grandmother. It's really weird. 1951, Kurt Russell, American actor and producer. I loved him in so many things, it's ridiculous. But one that a lot of people don't realize was a really good movie was Overboard with Goldie Hawn. That was a great movie he was in. 1964, Rob Lowe is born. American actor and producer. Everybody knows who he is. He's been in so many things from The Outsiders to West Wing to Austin Powers, Super Troopers 2. He's been in so many things it's crazy. But what he was known for for a lot of years was in 1988, Lowe was involved in a sex scandal over a videotape of him having sex with a 16-year-old girl he met at a nightclub. At the time, he was like 24 or 25. They were videotaped the night before the Democratic National convention in Atlanta, Georgia. Now here's the thing, before you think he's a total perv, the age of consent in Georgia was 14 at the time, so this was perfectly legal. Not alright, but it was legal. In 1995, they actually raised it up to 16. A little better, not much. Both were of legal age 
to consent to sexual activity, although they did have a law where you had to be 18 years of age to legally be involved in a recording like this. And uh, she wasn't, so turned into a big to-do. But his career rebounded after he went on Saturday Night Live and actually made fun of his behavior. 1979! Stormy Daniels is born. She made a lot of news in the last couple of years. She was born Stephanie Gregory. She's an adult film actress, and she had some past dealings with the president, which she was paid for. Died on March 17th, 1992. Grace Stafford, American actress and wife of animation producer Walt Lance. Now, you've, if you're old enough, you've seen Walt Lance's name at the end of some of the classic cartoons. Here's the cool thing. She was Woody Woodpecker. She was the voice of Woody Woodpecker, and it was great. That was one of Lance's creations. She voiced him from 1950 to 1991. She died a year later. All right, that's my video. Like I said, it's a short one. Not a lot of exciting things went on on this day, but that is March 17th. I'll tell you what, March 19th looks a little more exciting. I'll see you then. Everybody be nice to each other.